Okay, here we are, 4.03. I was here at 4 o'clock, but the computer or the live was not going live. So, you know, hello Monday. No, but it is a good day. Uh, happy to be here, glad to be here. Hope you're doing well. Uh, let me say hello in the chat. Are you doing well? Uh, yes, it has been a great day so far. Um, I just got home from uh, spending time with a friend. Uh, she was in town. And so we met up at a um, pedestrian shopping mall, shopping center, about half an hour north of here. Had a lovely little lunch and did some window shopping and some real shopping. Although I'm trying to be very intentional, trying to be very good. Don't want to fill up my house with more stuff that I'm not going to need, want, or enjoy. So this chat with you is kind of my opportunity to decompress, take a minute, have a little sip of my soda here, and answer the question of the day. But before I get into that, I was thinking about, you know, what is my routine when I get home from running errands, say. And it made me wonder what other people's routines are. So if you're, um, when you're watching this on the replay, go ahead and leave in the chat section what you kind of, your first two or three things you do when you get home. I'm curious. Mine is I get home, I, you know, drop my purse, drop my keys, and... Today, I reached for the uh, thermostat fairly quickly because it's a tad warm here, as it probably is for you, wherever you are in the country. Um, and then I immediately check on Alton, see where he is, make sure he's okay. Then I, um, today I did have to go to the bathroom, so I went to the, to the bathroom. Um, and then I go back to Alton, um, making sure he has water. Getting him, we keep his water bowl. Well, we have one water bowl for him inside in the bathroom because he's a very sloppy drinker. And, but being the spoiled pup he is, he doesn't really like to drink out of that bowl except for at nighttime. So his daytime regular bowl is outside. And <clears throat> I like to refresh it with water several times throughout the day. So I get him fresh water, I get him out to have a tinkle, um, give him some pets, all the things. Um, and then, to be honest, I'm not quite as good about putting things away right away as I should be. And that's how things can get kind of cluttered and messy. Um, Tis true the case today, although I did put my leftovers in the fridge. Um, yeah, so that's kind of my, oh, and then the other thing I always, I've tended to do, but have done more so since the pandemic is I wash my hands. I don't know, something about being home, uh, back in my own little bubble. Um, I really like to, even if I've washed my hands and use hand sanitizer when I'm out and about, just something about that feeling of nice, clean, uh, freshly washed hands with a fresh towel is something that says to me, okay, now I'm home. So. Yeah, at any rate, um, just made me think about my routine and wonder what other people's routines are as well. Hope you had a good weekend. Um, ours was pretty uneventful. We, oh, we did go out to dinner once uh, Saturday night for a friend, the friend who's in town. It was her birthday. So we went out for dinner. That was fun. Watched the Giants, watched the Tour de France. And we're working on a 2,000-piece jigsaw puzzle. And when it's done, I will share, either in Community Tab or here on the live, um, what it looks like. It's a picture of uh, the New York City skyline. So <clears throat> the buildings and the Brooklyn Bridge were fairly easy. Um, but now we're into the gradient sky. Oh, hey, Mary. So glad you could make it today. Ah, oh, yes. Established routines. They uh, 
be kind to yourself. Uh, go with the flow. That's how I've established my routines. I really thought about what I naturally do and then kind of incorporate some structure based on that. Because I found if I tried to force something that didn't come more naturally to me, it didn't last. Um, and then I would just get down about, you know, myself. So, um, yeah. Glad you're here. Yep. I've used to-do list. I've never heard of Habit You. And I think I've heard of Timo. And yes, habit tracking, man. It's a whole thing. There's a huge rabbit hole you can go down on the YouTubes and just the internet in general on um, habit tracking. My advice, unsolicited, is keep it simple at first. Uh, you know, loading yourself up with too many habits, at least I found to be overwhelming. So, um, but I think it can be a great kickstart to get you into a solid routine that you can maintain um, over the longer term. I'm curious how your garden is going, if you want to share, especially with all this heat. I tried to grow a cucumber and it died. Eh. Also tried to grow cilantro and that died too. So I've given up on gardening for this year. <laughs> um, I'll try again next year when I can get um, more of a setup together. Um, I want to try to do some, not true irrigation, uh, like drip water system, but something where I can have um, help watering. Yeah, see? Uh, well, that's the thing with gardening. I mean, you can always try again next year. Um, so, yeah, it just, it didn't work out for us this, uh, this year. Although I bought a couple of houseplants, so let's see if I can keep those alive. So far, knock on wood, I've been doing okay with houseplants. Because I get those um, steak, like uh, waterers. They're um, typically made of like a clay, clay a porous material. And then you stick a bottle in it, and it kind of self-waters the plant. So uh, here, let me show you. I can show you I have a plant in here. Check out this bad boy. See? So, got my plant, and then there's a little watering stick in there, terracotta. That's the word I was looking for. And then you just stick a bottle, and it waters itself. And these have really helped me not kill as many houseplants. Yeah, I buy them on Amazon too. They're cheaper. And then I just use my own glass bottles. Um, I'm looking at your habits. Waking up early, drinking lots of water, getting sunlight. Yep. Taking your vitamins, work on an exercise. Well, yeah, those are all great habits. And I don't know if you have an um, Apple Watch. I don't. But I know people who do, my husband included. And they can really also help the um, fitness parts of them can help with fitness tracking. So getting the exercise and um, walking and closing rings, that whole thing. People, um, I've learned, I've heard that people can, if they're open to assistive technology that way or health tracking, it can help them kind of get the, I don't want to say motivation, but like having the, the built-in tracking helps them feel more like accomplished or whatever I don't know so then they want to keep going I guess is what I'm saying so at any rate um but before I continue to ramble on let me go ahead and get to the question of the day I didn't see any others in the comments so uh I'm just gonna dive in here let's see oh here this is a good one what jobs did your parents do? 
12. My parents were, um, my dad was in the military. He uh, graduated from the, both were college educated. My dad graduated um, and then went on to, uh, he got a, I want to say a master's in business as well. Um, and then went on to um, join the Air Force. So this was like 1968, 67-ish. And yeah, so just around the time of the Vietnam War, joined the Air Force, became a pilot, served in the Air Force for 20 years, then um, retired. The military said, either you retire or we're going to move you and your family, uh, move you to a new station, a new base. And he didn't want to do that. We were very happily settled in Washington State, um, Tacoma to be exact. Uh, he was stationed at McCord Air Force Base. And then, um, so he was retired for a couple years. And then he got a job with the Washington National Guard where he worked on the civil side for, um, yeah, National Guard stuff. And I think, you know, he kind of worked his way up there, literally started kind of in the mailroom and then became a manager. And I never really knew exactly everything he did, but um, eventually became kind of the deputy, I want to say deputy director, but like the right-hand man to the top dog. So... You know, take that for what for what it is, and then he retired from there, and uh, so that's what he did. And my mom was a school teacher. She uh, got her college education in um, her college degree in education. Started out as a music teacher, um, and then, but basically, when my sister and I were born, she stopped teaching became a full-time mom. And then when I was in about the fourth grade, she got her credentials back up to snuff. She started teaching adult basic education out on the base. And then she became a substitute teacher in the regular public school system. And then, um, and then she started teaching kindergarten. She got a full-time permanent position teaching kindergarten for, I don't know, 12-ish, 15 years maybe. And then she was starting to think about retiring and um, uh, like then became a music teacher uh, or, you know, do reading, became, she wasn't like managing her own classroom anymore. She was teaching just specific subjects to, you know, children of every class throughout the day. And she did that until she passed away. So, yeah, military on my dad's side and education on my mom's. And Mary asks, did your dad serve in the Vietnam War? Yes, he did. Um, it was something he didn't talk about a lot. And I have mixed feelings about that because I have questions now and he's no longer with me to answer them or with us to answer them. Um, but he, I think was also conflicted because he was never stationed in Vietnam. He was stationed in Thailand. So he would do, you know, flying missions in the country, um, but was never stationed in country. So I think he, I think that's why he didn't like to talk about it because he had conflicted feelings about um, his service. And as we all know now about the Vietnam War, it was, it was a conflicting war. So, um, proud of his military service, but, you know, I think there were a lot of injustices about, and, and the government lying to the public and the Pentagon Papers and, and all that. So, um, and then he never served. He did uh, serve in, um, uh, I don't know, he was stationed in, after Vietnam, he was stationed in Iran. So after, 
or I think it was two, before the, the Shah was overthrown. Basically, when America was helping to prop up Iran, um, he served there for like a year. So, yeah, that was his service. And uh, I feel like I lived not the typical military brat life because of all my medical conditions. We were basically from the age I was two. We had two deployments. I was born in Colorado. Then we moved to Alabama, but then by the time I was two, we got stationed in Tacoma, and we lived there, you know, that's where he retired. So very, very, very um, abnormal for a a deployment or an assignment to be that long, Um, which is why when he hit the 20 years, uh, they gave him kind of an ultimatum. So I don't know, you know, I know some military brats um, lived in multiple states over multiple years uh, because both national, you know, in the United States and um, around the world. And uh, that was not our experience or my experience. Uh, Yes, exactly. Um, So the military gets at least back in the day, now the military has TRICARE for their insurance, because Mary asks, did your father's insurance help with you and your medical conditions? 100%. It did. Back in the day, it was known as Champus. And um, I was very fortunate because the a specialty care that I needed, the military could not provide. So I got to be treated, or I was treated, at the Seattle Orthopedics Children's Hospital which is a very um, highly respected, um, you know, I don't know, world-renowned, but regionally renowned, nationally renowned um, hospital, part of the network, Children's Network. Well, if you ever remember hearing about the Children's Miracle Network telethon, all those um, uh, children's hospitals in that network, it was an annual fundraiser they would do to help raise money for families who couldn't afford um, their medical bills. But at any rate, we, because we had insurance, we, we could. But um, I got really great care there. Um, and it was only because, um, <clears throat> you know, the military was like, we can't, they weren't set up for orthopedic, pediatric interventions that I needed. So there's a lot of bureaucracy. And now as an adult, you know, my mom and, and my dad, but my mom carried most of the burden with dealing with all the insurances and paperwork and red tape. And, you know, she made it look easy, but I know it was not. And um, so I'm very thankful that we had the quality of care that we did. Um, and that was, you know, when I aged out of um my dad's medical or military benefits, then, um, you know, I had to get, I got care um, in the private sector like everybody else. So good question. I hope that answered it. Okay. (laughs) Um, Let's see what else. Any, if there are any other questions, um, feel free to ask away. Uh, And if you're in the replay, if you're watching this on the replay, Feel free to ask. Um, Yeah. I'm just uh, glad to be home. Glad to be in air conditioning. And looking forward to having a really fun and productive week. I don't have any more appointments this week. No more meetings. So I'm looking forward to being in the office. Getting editing done. And um, yeah, working, working back on all my creative passions. So... With that, I think I'm going to wrap this up. Uh, Oh, have I started canning? There you go. Uh, Yes, we have. Uh, Funny you should ask. Timely you should ask. Uh, During the vacation break over the 4th of July. Hold on, let me get a sip. I busted out the canner. And uh, 
Ooh. Burks. Andrew and I tried canning garbanzo beans because then we can make our own homemade hummus. So that may be a video that's coming soon. Uh, the first attempt was marginally successful. We overcooked them and the jars siphoned quite a bit. So yeah, we're still kind of learning, which is why I didn't try recording any of that. Uh, but I've done some more research and so has he. And my real goal is to try to replicate the Whole Foods jalapeno hummus. And so I've bought, I mean, I buy it all the time, but because uh, I tried making some of my own. And it's okay, but it was still not to that level. So I bought um, another package at Whole Foods, but I'm intentionally, I'm going to keep the packaging to um, try to replicate the recipe um, on the Whole Foods brand. And so, like, I bought some uh, jalapeno powder, which is one of those 10 ingredients that I didn't have. Yes, garlic hummus. Mm, I really like hummus, period. Uh, and it's a good high-protein food. And garbanzo beans are relatively cheap. So we're going to keep at it. You know, practice makes perfect. Um, and then I also want to eventually jar or can um, my own marinara sauce and just some other... Um, more shelf stable things that um you want to can because it you know it's safer to eat that way so um i'm excited but you know i'm just getting started so you know all, all <laughs> it could have been worse nothing bad happened we just like i said i had a little bit of siphoning and uh we'll learn better for next time yeah i'm so glad that you caught the live too uh, I really appreciate anybody who can join, especially my friends and the friends I'm meeting here through YouTube. And every Monday at 4 o'clock, um, if I'm ever not able to, like I didn't know if the visit with my friend was going to go long today, I'll always post in the community tab. Um, but I really will always try to make it at 4 o'clock as much as for my own habit um, as for you guys. So... Thank you so much for joining, and I hope you're having a great day and a great rest of the week. And uh, unless I see you before through comments, I will see you next Monday. Okay? Take care, guys. Happy, happy Monday, happy middle of July, and uh, see you next week. Take care.